when you really look at it and you tell what happened, you have a better realization of, of the impossibility of even identifying a shooter, any shooter. 20 years ago this summer, Savannah Police Officer Mark McPhail was working an off-duty job here. He was providing security at night for this bus station and for this Burger King restaurant that is currently out of business. There was a homeless man in this parking lot who was being harassed and intimidated. He yelled for help. The officer ran over, and seconds later, Officer Mark McPhail was shot and killed. It was tragic, horrifying, and chaotic. And two decades later, it all still is. Shots ring through the night. A man lies pistol whipped in the corner. A cop crumbles in the street in light. Now we finally knocking over the haystack now. See me swimming with a bullet out. Detective man, you do what you got to do. When a black man shoot a white man down. No, it won't retribute. This was the pool hall called Charlie Brown's. Troy them would have been playing pool right there. Larry Young, when he came from the Greyhound bus station, he went to that uh, convenience store to go get his beer. But when he came back up the sidewalk, that's when he encountered Sylvester Coles in front of the pool hall. And Sylvester Coles was asking him for a can of beer and he refused. And so what happened was Larry Young kept walking really fast and he was walking up to the SunTrust and then Coles starts following him. Troy them came through here and Sylvester Coles and Larry Young were already in the middle of the parking lot and they were still arguing. The man who admitted to harassing the homeless person went to police the next day and told them he saw Troy Davis shoot the officer. Wanted posters went up all over Savannah. A reward offered to catch the so-called dangerous cop killer. Racial tensions inflamed. The police officer came running from behind here. McPhail. McPhail, and came running into the parking lot. And apparently Troy them had already taken off. They had, Troy said it, when they heard shots, they were already at the fence back over there. After the shooting, Troy Davis was in Atlanta four hours away. His sister says scared for his life. This man, Derek Johnson, a pastor, got in touch with Davis. He volunteered to pick him up and drive him back to Savannah to surrender. He says Troy Davis insisted he was innocent. The pastor, who has never told a story to a reporter before, was stunned the DA's office never interviewed him. You're with this man for four hours. You're bringing him back to Savannah to police custody. They never interviewed you? Never talked to me. Never asked you a question about your journey? Never. What he said? if he had a weapon, if Nothing. he admitted to the crime, Nothing. if he didn't admit to the crime? Nothing. And this is the one case where nobody wanted to know. And I don't think now, looking back, that anybody cared. She said she heard the shots, right? Mm -hmm. And then she came out of her room and ran to the edge of the stairs. And then she saw Troy stand over the body with a smirky smile. This is where, this is approximately the area where it took place, right here. So, but it would have been at nighttime, so it would have been a lot darker, but still, I don't think you could see my face that clear from where you are. Well, she identified Troy's face from there. How are you supposed to see a black man with a smirky smile at 12, 31 o'clock in the morning? Once they had, Sylvester Cole said, Troy Davis and he lived in um, Cloverdale. It was only one Troy that lived in Cloverdale at that time. Then what they try to do is they start going to people's houses, round up, say who know Troy, who know Troy, who know Troy. Almost all of the prosecution's star witnesses have changed their stories. Some saying police pressured them to say Troy Davis did it. Like Didi was 16, they went to his house and took him out of his house with like 20 police officers with no parents and no lawyers interrogated him for seven hours. You were afraid that Daryl Collins is one of the prosecution witnesses who signed a police statement implicating yeah. Troy Davis. And I told them over and over that this is, I didn't see this happen. They put what they wanted to put in that statement. He said, I kept telling them Troy didn't do it, and they put in that statement what they wanted to put in there and told me they would charge me with accessory to murder unless I signed the statement. Jump in, jump in, jump in, jump in. Where you gonna 
I don't expect people to walk around and say, oh, Troy Davis is innocent. I expect people to say, you're supposed to be convicted, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt. He was definitely guilty. All of the witnesses, um, they were able to, you know, to, to ID him as, as the person who actually did it. The primary reason he was convicted, the witness testimony. The slain police officer's wife agrees. They were just so adamant about what they saw, when they saw it. But this is how the juror feels now. If, if I knew then what I know now, Troy Davis would not be on death row. It, the verdict would be not guilty. They'll round up all the witnesses and suspects and accuse them of lesser crimes. Now we molly knocking over the haystack now. See me swimming with the dough legging out. And the police planning do all they got to do. When a black man shoot a white man. Jumping, jumping, so free.